Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Parker Fly. One of the most interesting and exotically different guitars there is out there. It is super thin, super unique, um, and often called a guitar only a mother could love, <laughs> if that's even a thing. Um, so I want to talk about a few things that you may not know about the Parker Fly. Number one, the Parker Fly started in 1993 by Ken Parker and Larry Fishman. Now, you might know Larry Fishman from Fishman Products, you know, like the Paizo system. However, that wasn't really the main focus on the guitar originally. See, Ken Parker was trying to figure out why a guitar neck has to be so thick at the base, when really we're all trying to get access right up to that 24th fret. So if you take a look at a Parker guitar, what you'll notice is, is that it doesn't get thicker until the last, almost the last two frets. Until that point, it stays the same thickness all the way down the neck, which makes it the thinnest neck heel pretty much in existence. Number dose. There are two kinds of Parker flies. There is the pre-refined, like this one right here, and the refined. This refers to the different ownerships of the company. See, refined means uh, that US Music, who owns Washburn Guitars, when they took over the company from Ken Parker, refined the process, or in other words, changed it. They owned the company up until Jam took it over, and in July of 2015, Jam officially shut down the American Parker shop. Parker guitars are not only strong and light, they are perfectly balanced. This odd horn actually has a purpose. See, they wanted to extend the horn out as far as possible, so when it hooks on a strap, it situates perfectly. One of my favorite things to show people with a Parker guitar is the one finger trick, where you take the strap button like so, put your finger right there, no illusions, no strings. You can see it's that light. You can do it even with your pinky if you wanted to. In fact, why not? There's my pinky. You can see that's how light the guitar is. And you can see how effortlessly I'm holding it and the guitar is balanced even when moving. The idea is that when it was strapped around you, it would be easy to hold, comfortable to the user. Number four, Parkers are wood. All Parkers are wood. <laughs> Uh, Parker Fly, like this case, the Mojo, and the Parker Classic and the Standard are all wood. Now, there are different kinds of woods, but still wood. This particular Parker, the Fly Mojo, is a solid one piece of mahogany. Now, there's other models that are made of poplar or basswood, but they would also be one solid piece. If they're spruce, they're one solid piece. It's one of the most interesting things about the guitar. It is one solid piece of wood including thickness. So you gotta understand they start with almost a four inch block of wood to make all these contours. The neck is also wood. The neck in a lot of cases is sometimes basswood. In this model's case, this, wood is, this neck is actually mahogany as well. So mahogany body with mahogany neck. So why the carbon fiber? Well, here's what happens. Because of what we talked about in the first one about the neck being so thin right here, they glue the neck joint into the body then when they carve all this away, it's so thin that it's fragile. So they wrap a piece of carbon fiber glass onto the back of the guitar and epoxy it on. Think of it like a underbody skeleton. It's hard, like a shell. This reinforces the guitar and makes it very strong. It allows them to make the guitar as thin as they want it to be. Then the fretboard is also carbon fiber glass. This allows the guitar to be stronger as well. It's like sandwiched. The frets are stainless steel and they're glued on one by one with epoxy because the fretboard itself is paper thin. If you saw this, if this was paint line wasn't there, you would see that the fretboard is about the thickness of a piece of construction paper. So there's no way to press a fret into it. So they have to glue them. Number five, the Parker guitar is very controversial, not only from the refined to pre-refined, but there's a lot of mystique about it. A lot of players didn't even understand the guitars were made out of wood long into the company's history. There's also problems where conversations have had about materials like frets or having issues. The truth is, is that because of the complexity to make this guitar, when it is done wrong, it is pretty violent and nasty looking. So when it's done right, it's pretty much impervious and should last forever. So when you see a bad one, you gotta take that in consideration. So when you're looking at a pre-refined, which is what this one is. In other words, uh, before US Music took over the company, you'll notice in most cases, they'll be DiMaggio's, very easy to figure out. The trim arm will have a hex shape to it instead of being rounded. It'll have 
essentially five knobs, a volume, which is a master for all the controls, a volume for your magnetics, the tone control, and of course a volume for your acoustic piezo system, and a tone control. This wheel here is designed so that as you turn it, you can change the way the firm, how firm the tremolo actually is. Now, if you go to the back, there's actually a switch that you can make this a hardtail or fully floating. And again, that's for the other side of that wheel. There's an LED or a light to tell you when the battery is getting low. The battery compartment is actually in the back of the guitar, right here. Nine volt battery, just for the piezo system, and a button to convert it from stereo to mono use. The Refines will have Seymour Duncans. And again, they're attached the same way as the DiMaggio's using that screw we talked about earlier. They will have three main knobs. The magnetic volume, the tone control with a coil tap for the, or coil split for the humbuckers. And of course, a volume knob with no tone control for the piezo system. The input jack is a smart jack there is to basically, it knows when it's stereo or mono cable. The switches have been downgraded to standard three-way switches uh, from those nicer like 12 terminal high quality ones as before. The adjustment for the, the tremolo now requires actually an added tool and so does to make the tremolo uh, arm looser or tighter. You have to adjust with a tool. The battery compartment switches to the back. That's pretty much the main changes. Bonus, number six. Although the Parker Flies have truss rods, the original ones did not. I found nowhere where there was talk about necks going bad. In fact, they're very hard to move these truss rods when you turn them anyways. The Refined will have a compartment right there if it has this extra wing. If it doesn't have this wing, which is for hanging on a headstock, that's what that extra piece of wood was put there for. If it doesn't have that, the truss rod will be sided down the front, see that? Now, like I said, the original Parkers did not have truss rods. That was added later. And most people believe it's because there was a lot of uncomfortableness when the salesman was explaining to the guitar player how it didn't need a truss rod. So they added them. So that was fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for checking out the Parker Fly with me today. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, please hit the subscription button down below. Please leave comments. If there's things I missed or things you didn't understand, put that in the comments. Questions? Even thoughts about what your experience with these guitars have been. Put that in the comments. Guitar players love reading about other guitar players' experiences and thoughts. As always, thank you again and know your gear.